All right, hello everyone. Happy Friday. Looks like you have sound. Some stuff out of my pockets here. Let's get settled in. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Tim, and I go by Foamy Guy on GitHub and Discord. Speaking of Discord, let me pull up the chat which is showing below me here we can turn off a couple of these previews we don't quite need all of these let's close that one how's it going tammy happy friday uh Deshipu, how's it going thanks for the confirmation on sound uh biata uh hello and happy uh happy day happy friday and everything made it through another week phone out here c grover how's it going um, so, uh, again, uh, you know, hello to everyone. My name is Tim, and this is the CircuitPython Deep Dive, uh, Adafruit Deep Dive program. And originally this program was started by Scott, working on uh, the CircuitPython core. Uh, Scott's the lead developer. He is on a break right now from streaming still, uh, because he's just had a child very recently, so he's, uh, you know, not getting as much sleep and having to dedicate time, obviously, to taking care of the child. So uh, I'm filling in on the streams for Deep Dive uh, at this point in time. And so that's what we were doing. Uh, for folks that might be new or watching this video in the future, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, you know, if you don't know what this video is going to be about, we are working on CircuitPython, which is a implementation of Python that runs on tiny computers called microcontrollers. Uh, there's a bunch of pictures of them on the downloads page here. This is CircuitPython.org, the website for CircuitPython, which is where you can go if you'd like to learn more about it. Um, in addition to that, I'd encourage you to head over to the Discord and join us there, uh, adafru.it slash Discord. That's the chat that is showing right below me there on the screen. Um, these are all the different devices that can run CircuitPython. We are writing Python code that runs on these tiny devices. Essentially, this main chip here uh, is a little computer for all intents and purposes. Um, and we can write Python code for it, and it will run it, and we can interact with all the peripherals on the device. Like, this one happens to have a bunch of... RGB LEDs, it also has a speaker over here, it has two buttons, it has a switch, uh, you know, like a toggle switch, um, has a temperature sensor, I think a light sensor, a couple other things, so we can uh, interact with all these different peripherals with our Python code. Um, so that's kind of like, you know, the 50,000 foot view of what we're uh, looking at, and then getting in more specifically to my project today, I will be continuing on the uh, Game & Watch Octopus. Uh, game, which I'll pull up my camera here. This is the game that I have been making for the Pi Gamer device, which mine is inside of a case, but I'll pull this up here so you can get a look at uh, this is the actual device that I'm using. We'll even head over to the product page where we will be able to see a couple more angles uh, of this device. So this is one of these microcontrollers that runs CircuitPython. This one, of course, has a screen on it. It's kind of like a little handheld gaming device. Um, so this is what I am working on today on the Octopus game. Uh, I will mention, um, you know, we made it over here to Adafruit.com. Adafruit is a hardware and software company based out of New York, and Adafruit is the company that pays uh, the folks that work on CircuitPython, both uh, folks that work on it full-time, like Scott uh, and Jeff and Dan and Katni, um, as well as folks who work on it part-time, like myself, uh, Tectric, and I believe there's uh, potentially a few others at this point that are kind of on the fringes doing guides and doing form help and all kinds of stuff like this. Um, so Adafruit is, uh, you know, paying those of us that get paid to work on CircuitPython for it. So if you want to help support the CircuitPython project, one of the ways you can do that is by purchasing hardware from Adafruit. So uh, if you head over to Adafruit.com, you can see a list of all the hardware they sell. Um, lots of the different microcontrollers uh, that run CircuitPython, they sell those. Lots of the stuff that you can plug in and hook up and use the microcontrollers with, like RGB lights and buzzers and beepers and, uh, you know, buttons and joysticks and sensors and all kinds of... Uh, add-ons, if you will. Um, they sell all sorts of stuff like that, so you can find those on adafruit.com. Um, and then I'll just say, uh, again, you know, thanks on behalf of uh, all of us that work on the project. Thank you for um, supporting it by purchasing hardware from them. Um, so let's catch up on the chats here. I think I saw a couple go by. How's it going? Uh, let's see, Nirodoc, uh, how's it going? And Ask Patrick W, C. Grover, uh, Deshipu, and DJ Devin. Uh, Paul, uh, how's it going, Paul? Looking and listening uh, on a new smart TV. Nice. Uh, so for the moment, we'll not write things. That's cool. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it's always nice to... Uh, I've, I've essentially got smart TVs. My TVs are... They are smart TVs, but really I just am using them as a standard display, but I have a computer plugged into them, so I end up 
doing sort of smart TV type stuff on there. Um, so let's dive in, and I think where I left off, folks are interested, there are VODs of this particular project, so you can watch back, um, I think last week on the deep web workflow stuff, maybe the week before that we might have started uh, on this game, if not on the deep dive, I don't remember for certain, um, definitely on my Saturday stream, so if you're interested in this particular Game & Watch Octopus project, you can go back and find uh, the videos where I've done the bulk of what you know what has been done so far uh, so if you're interested in getting more of the history of this project you can find those and then at the end of course there will eventually be a guide for this and so you'll be able to follow along if you want to build this particular game um, and then I'm also trying to write the guide with a an eye towards like you know n maybe if you want to make your own one of these relatively simple style games as well right like it's one thing to just you know, run the octopus game and play it. Uh, but I'm also trying to write the guide for somebody who might want to either build their own game and watch game that's brand new that hasn't been, um, you know, created before, in, in which case, I guess it's not a game and watch game, but you know, build your own game based on these sort of simple hide and show graphics. Um, or if you even wanted to implement one of the other Nintendo game and watch games, because there are actually a, a handful of these different games floating around out there. I just happened to pick this one to start with. Um, and I may still do some others as well, so um, we have the guide to look forward to as well once all of this is all said and done. Where I am at right now, though, I think I'm uh, just working on game mode behavior. What I have right now is uh, all of the sort of objects exist and do what they're supposed to do. Um, of course, I just got my uh, diver caught right there. Uh, I don't know, does it reset? That's one of the things I guess we need the behavior for still is uh, resetting after you get caught. So why don't we start there since we are in fact caught right now. Uh, one thing is these are the wrong projects. Let's go PyCharm. And actually I'm just going to pull this here. Let's get device workspace. This window. And we'll bounce that back like we were split here last time so let's get back to a normal looking thing here we might as well just go ahead and get a serial connection as well i'm sure we're going to want to see the serial output or get to the REPL or something at some point so i'll do that uh and then basically what we need to do is make some mechanism that's gonna basically advance the game state after the diver gets caught um Kind of, let's see, the screen is covered by chat. Oh, uh, let's see. Get to OBS here. Uh, I will, it is kind of wider today, isn't it, the chat here? Let me, uh, let's see, there's nothing private on this, is there? So it's easier if I do this. We'll go back to curtain a minute here. Uh, let's shrink this a bit. And shrink this a bit. Can you move the peg gamer? Yeah, we're working on the uh, on the layout a bit here. And actually, we have some room to go further there. We can actually come back a bit on this. up a lot of the code honestly we'll probably spend a lot of time with this full screen so we'll switch back and forth like that that way the uh, camera is over there we can see it um okay um so let's see where we're getting caught i think that i'm gonna re re get in the mode here so octopus game let's look at code pie as well code pie is basically just going to be at this point you know, I started writing all this code where I was putting stuff in CodePy, but at this point, a lot of it has all been refactored, and most of it lives uh, inside Octopus Game. The main stuff that's still in CodePy is, like, the core sort of top-level group that the graphics get shown with, and then the button handling uh, for the actual physical buttons. And in this case, I'm using uh, Start and Select. Oh, it did eventually reset there. Did it actually reset? Well, maybe it's... Reset it by doing this. 
It must have reset maybe when I connected the terminal or something. I don't think it does automatically move on. If it if it does actually auto automatically go, then it's it takes too long. <laughs> I'll tell you that because we're still caught there now. So it, it probably should be like one or two seconds max, something like that. Not very long. Uh, so in CodePy, we're basically getting the button events from the actual button hardware, and then if the buttons got pressed, we just send them into the game object uh, by calling these functions: octopus game, right button press, and left button press. Uh, and then either way, no matter if there was a button press event or not, we also will call game.tick, which will be kind of the primary, you know, driving force behind our game. We call this tick over and over. Inside a tick, it's responsible for, like, updating the state and doing stuff as things happen inside of here. So um, let's take a look at when we get caught. So uh, if we are in normal gameplay... Um, if the diver is not caught, then go ahead and call tick on the octopus, uh, which will cause the tentacles of the octopus to either extend or retract. Um, but this is only if the diver is not caught, because this says if caught diver tile grade is hidden, which means it's not showing. Um, let me also shuffle these chats back to the top here. Wikipedia says there were a total of 62. Wow, I did not realize there were that many. Um, 62 Game & Watch. I think there are some more uh, modern like remakes as well. The original run was back in the 80s or 90s, early 90s potentially. Um, but I think there are some newer ones like with color screens and some more fancy stuff. I've seen a couple Zelda ones uh, floating around. Um, 62 though, I did not realize. So if the diver is caught though, uh, well, let's just keep going down here, I guess. If uh, the player's index is zero uh and the player is not hidden then the player's index is zero and the player is not hidden oh okay and uh zero tentacle zero segment two tile grid is showing it's yeah if it's not hidden So this is checking a specific one of these. This would be Tentacle Zero Segment 2. It would actually be checking this one. I wonder, though, why is that curve location index 0? Oh, no, Tentacle Zero A. Excuse me, Tentacle Zero A, which is actually this horizontal one. Tentacle Zero A is the one that comes out here. So this bit of code right here is basically saying if this tile grid at the very end, the tippy tip one on this tentacle that comes out here if that tile grid is visible and if the user's location is index zero which is this one right here right next to it then the player is going to get caught we're going to show the caught diver and then we basically have a series of these one for each index so this player index matches up with this tentacle end this player index matches up with this one this player index matches up with this one this player index matches up with this one down here, and this player index at the treasure chest matches up with the last one all the way over here right by the treasure. Um, and that is essentially what all of these are doing, and if they're true, then it's saying show the caught diver. Um, and then here we have if, uh, if not caught diver hidden, so if it is showing, then we check if it's actually been long enough for the animation delay. And if it has been long enough for the animation delay, then we update the tile index inside of our caught diver tile grid, which is this tile grid right inside of here that's got the diver whose arms and legs are shaking like that. Uh, the way those are shaking is because there are two tiles in that tile grid and we are swapping back and forth between them. Uh, Web Archive has a large collection of emulators of those games that work and run in the browser. I did find one, uh, I did find an octopus that ran in the browser. Played that on one of the uh, streams and I used that to figure out some of the uh, behaviors. We'll probably get back to that at some point, truthfully, because I need to uh, figure out more of the fine-grained details about the differences between game modes A and B. Um, I think... Like, roughly speaking, I think one of them is more or less, like, infinite. You don't really lose lives, and it doesn't really count scores. And then the other one is, like, 
actually the game where you do lose lives and it does count score. Um, I think that's the difference, but I do need to like actually try it on a on a real one. Hopefully that's legit to the original way. Um, see if I can catch it in a video. So we basically want something here that says like if we have been caught long enough, then go back to like not being caught anymore. I think. Um, So we should define a variable for like what is long enough. How long do we want the diver to be caught? Um, caught diver delay, caught diver delay, caught diver length, time length, length. Uh, let's say two seconds to start with, 3.0. So then when we first change, like when we very first get caught, we need to store the time. So we'll make a variable for this as well. And then inside of um, show caught diver, I believe is the name of the function right here. When this first gets called, we'll go self dot diver caught time equals now. I don't actually have a now though, so I guess we will go now equals time dot monotonic. Now we have that time, and then back inside of our tick, we basically want to go check that time against our constant up at the top there. If we're showing the caught diver, if uh, now is less than or equal to self dot diver caught time plus, uh, let's see, plus um, aim dot caught diver length so if we are still within the uh, length here then we're gonna do the animation bit if we are not still within that length then we basically want to go back to kind of like the beginning essentially so I think what we'll do is uh, self.hide Hot diver. Yeah. Should do it for us, right? Parents still have the octopus one somewhere. Oh, that's awesome. I looked into uh I looked into them on eBay. They are um touch on the expensive side, truthfully though. It's like over a hundred bucks for an original one. Uh, I may still pick it up one of these days because it would be kind of cool to uh, have them side by side, but let's get caught by this one. Okay, there we go. So, yep. Okay, I think a little bit longer. Oh. Oh, interesting. That was weird. Do you see it bounce back there? It's like we got caught again. I'll just wait here, and the first tentacle will get me. Right there, it got me. It goes back. Oh, you see there's a gap in that in that uh, tentacle there. That gets weird. It must have lost its state of uh, where the actual... Which... It must have lost its state about which segments we're showing. Probably what we want to do is just reset it all the way back to um, like base with no tentacles out. May have dropped potentially. We got, I'm back to green now, so I think I probably just cut out on me for a minute there, the uh, network. 
Uh, but it is back to showing good frame rates on OBS now, so it looks like it came back automatically. Let me check uh, one other place over here, actually. Let's do this. Uh, I don't know what this shows. Let me do it over here. Okay, this one I think I... Should I pause or check your encoder settings? Say streaming. Maybe it just never updated? I don't know. Having same experience on YouTube? Seems okay now. Okay, we did. I did get it back into here. I will pause this one, so that should hopefully free up a bit of the bandwidth as well. Make sure I don't have any others running here. Okay. I'll throw the OBS down here and try to keep an eye on the... Uh, there, I'll try to keep an eye on the uh, little green... Uh, Red, yellow, green chart. Yeah, I will say the uh, good thing is usually, usually knock on wood, when my uh, network does skip a beat like that, it generally comes back and is okay. Keeps losing it. If you are still having trouble, try refreshing the page. Um, that's sometimes I notice when I'm watching streams, if it does cut out and then come back, like sometimes refreshing afterwards is uh, gets it back to working better. Uh, so give that a try if you didn't. Um, and then I'll press on for now, and I'll try to keep an eye on the uh, on the thing over there. So we were back in here. When we call hidecot diver, we want to also say self .octopus .hide all tentacles. Nope, not hidden. Just hide all tentacles. No, hide all segments. Excuse me. So when the diver goes back to not being caught anymore, then all the tentacle segments get hidden that way we're basically starting back at the beginning again because when you when you first start all the segments are hidden they kind of start showing one at a time um so that should reset us i do think we want to go a little bit longer the two seconds felt really quick so let's try maybe four seconds uh and then let's see where that gets us Whoop, uh let me camera instead of that Uh, okay, uh, so we can get caught. There we go, already. About four seconds, yeah, feels a lot, feels like a lot better time. I do see this one is still showing. Uh, so there are actually two of them. So do our hide caught, uh, excuse me, does our hide all segments not work right? Let's check on that again real quick. So I'm just going to get caught by the first one here. So then you get caught, although this time they weren't actually showing, I guess. Oh, but this one was on. Okay, you know what it is, is it's not that they, um, it's not that they don't get hidden. It's that when the octopus ticks start happening again, it doesn't have the right state anymore. So as part of hide all segments, we need to also actually reset the state of, like, which tentacles are hidden and which ones are showing. Because um, it kind of, like, keeps track of that in order to, you know, extend out and retract back. Uh, let's see, curious. Uh, let's see, should you put all of those weights into a configuration constant so you can tune them on different microcontrollers? Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I have a couple of them, like, all the ones I do have are in... Uh, I mean, they're in, I guess I would call them configuration constants. They're in variables at the at the top of their respective classes. Uh, when it comes time to, like, publish the code, I may pull a few of them out. So, like, you know, I don't know, some of the ones inside the octopus, like, base tick delay or, I don't know, some of these things might come out and just go into CodePy. That way you don't have to dig to try to edit them. But, um, yeah, you can definitely play with those. Let's take a look inside of um, the hide all segments. Where is that actual pick for calling hide all segments? Okay, so yeah, this is just going through the list and setting them to hidden. It needs to also. Um, 
reset the state essentially, which are these indexes here. I think it should just set them all to zero or negative negative one. It's negative one. Yeah, I do. I think it is negative one because zero is actually meaning that the first segment is showing. That is segment zero of this tentacle. And when that index is on zero, it means that one is showing. So negative one is actually the number that means that no segments on that tentacle are showing. And we do need to go indexes here need to be all back to negative one when we call hide all segments um cur index oh i see okay this is how it sets them actually it starts them oh interesting they're in a list but they're but they're actually variables themselves so maybe we should just edit them on their own so we'll just go self dot each of these tentacle zero cur index equals negative one one well nope nope here we go two three okay uh, and then i know i think we'll need to do um directions as well i think we should reset them all back to extending also So let it get caught. Ah. Hmm. I wonder if the way that I have these as variables and inside of a list. Yeah, I, it's unclear to me the way these tie together. Like when I put this, it, when I put this variable, this field, inside this list, if I update it later in this list, is that updating this variable or not? I don't actually know. If it's not, then I, then I think that's our problem. Because I do think later on it's uh, maybe editing these inside of the list rather than on the individual variables. to look at what it shows. Okay. Well, is that zero or yeah. The directions are correct, but the uh indexes or not. Even though we just set them. So I think the I think we kind of have two copies of these and we don't really want two copies of the same. Yeah, because in the list, this is one, but as the individual variable right here, it's negative one. It gets tricky, actually. Inside of uh, octopus tick, we're going to need to do some stuff differently.
Right. And so the crux of this is that tentacle zero is different from the rest. Tentacle zero has a zero A and a zero B. One of them goes down. This one here goes down, zero B, and then zero A goes out horizontally. That's the only tentacle that has a split that behaves that way in the standard gameplay. Uh, this tentacle here, tentacle one, also does have a split, but it never uses this second leg of the split, only when you catch the diver. That's the only time it shows this tip one here. Um, and so then in the standard extracting, uh, extending and retracting, it will never actually show the B-side, so it doesn't need different behavior. But tentacle zero, since it can be on either segment zero or segment, uh, excuse me, tentacle, 0A or tentacle 0B, which are the, you know, the breakpoint here, it needs different behavior. And so this is the behavior for tentacle 0 extending, and then this is tentacle 0 retracting, and then here is if it's not on tentacle 0, this is any of the other tentacles. And they all essentially do the same thing right now because they all have the same behavior and it's basically trying to use those lists. Uh, but the problem is when it goes to update the values inside those lists, that is not transferring back to the original variables. And so I th think what we should probably do is uh, maybe do away with these all together as individual variables and just only keep them inside of the lists. So we won't have tentacle zero cur index, tentacle one, tentacle two, we won't have all of these. We will just have tentacle cur indexes. It will be a list that contains all of them. And same thing for directions, actually, because that's going to be the next, the next thing that has the same situation, which is we will get rid of all of these directions, and we will only use this list. So let's start that. Weird, we also have these, but I think these we never update, really. We just update the tile grids inside them. How's it going, uh, Toddbot? Nice to see you. Happy Friday. Uh, so let's comment these ones as well. We are uh, facing the realities of, uh, I think, like, value versus reference type thing is pretty much the core concept of what uh, what's troubling us right here. I have a ping in one of the other channels. Or, oh, this was the live broadcast channel, of course, right there. Oh, in the past on the stream. I gotcha. Spoiler alert. Whenever you catch up, I guess it's not really a spoiler alert because you don't hear me. <laughs> well, I guess maybe you do. I don't know. Uh, okay, so then here we're not going to be setting any of these. I'm just going to delete these ones. And, well, no, let's not delete them. Instead, I guess we're going to go... I mean, is there a fill? They're like list.fill. Can you do that in Python? That would be convenient. What? Repeat? Oh, but this is from iter tools. We probably, I don't know if we have iter tools. I don't see it, at least not right away, so I'll just do it this way. So we'll go, um, 
Tentacle index is zero. And of course, this could be in a for loop, I guess. We could loop over the ranges or something, but... Yeah, in fact, actually, let's do that, because then we could do both inside. Now we go through all four of them and set each one back to negative ones. List colon equals value, so negative one in my case times length. Interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen a list colon equals. That's basically like for replacing everything inside of a list. That's pretty nifty. I do like that. Thank you. Colon. Yeah, I've never seen. I've seen colons. I've never seen the colon by itself. I've always seen a colon either with a number on the left or the right, and I never remember which side does what. I always have to guess and check. This actually gets even easier. We don't even need the for loops. You could do like an arbitrary subset of the list as well, right? Like you could do one, three, or something, and then as long as this number matches however many this is actually targeting, which I don't know if it's, it's like probably, you know, zero on one side but one on the other side or whatever. It's like off by one on one, not the other. Um, so you could probably just overwrite a subset. That. That's interesting. Colon. It's the accessor by itself. Okay. Oh. Comprehension, which will give you the a one line for the loop. Yeah, I like this. This one is essentially the one liner as well, uh, and I'll actually use the same ones when we set it here because this is actually now doing the same thing. Whoop. Yeah, I was kind of like trying to make it so that these would be the same variable, but it doesn't work like that. I think uh, hindsight. Oh, it doesn't exist, I see, before you do that to it. Okay, so we can do, oh no, tentacles, tentacles, Nicole Kerr indexes, the list. So then what we'll have to do also is uh, we will have to change the logic of tentacle zero because that one was referring to these to the zero variables directly rather than the lists, whereas tentacles one through three, they were all using the lists. Um, I'm going to leave these for now. We're, we're going to come back and cut them out eventually, but 
I'm going to leave them just for now. We don't need this anymore. We probably don't need these, but I'll keep them for a second. And then, yeah, these, all of these we're going to have to fix. So instead of tentacle zero current index, it's actually tentacle current index is zero. Really everywhere where this gets used. And then direction here, no longer that, but instead is local directions zero. Paths do still exist. Well, for Tentacle Zero, actually, is the only one with different paths, but they do still exist. YouTube's live again, thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll, fingers crossed again, knock on wood, hopefully we're done with that for, for the day. It's usually not multiple times in the same day, so it's already revealing itself to be an unlucky day, I guess. Uh, we do have another index one here. This... Okay, now zero is modifying the things inside the list. Oh, uh, no, yeah, path still exists. That one's fine. Um, and then one through three, they were already using the lists anyway. So those should keep behaving the same. All this works it means after we go back to not being caught all the tentacles revert back and they start extending the correct order which they are these ones at the tip here are not extending even before it's their turn like they were before so that's what we fixed by doing that this way let's see Catch up here. Uh, failed to watch previous episode on Game & Watch. Had an idea on how to emulate the liquid crystal display. If you draw the glyphed on a glyphed on a single bitmap with, a, with palette, but each element uses a unique color, then your color palette can be a set of black and white, depending on whether you want it to display or not, I assume. Kind of like a bit display. The image would never change, only the palette to apply could that work fast enough i think it it probably would be faster to be honest with you because i think that color uh changing colors inside the palette is actually one of the most efficient ways to change the screen i think um so honestly the animation probably would be faster that way the thing is though my delay uh my game tick delay is high enough that we're limited not by well that's the octopus one but um what is the actual tick delay? Basically, we're not we're 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 not limited by the uh, we're not drawing as fast as we can. We're drawing slower than it's possible, so we don't necessarily need to speed up. Um, I guess actually it doesn't state as normal gameplay. It actually doesn't have a tick delay. The tick is just going as fast as it can, but all of the animations, like animating the caught diver here, this one is having the diver animation delay, which is 0 0.3 seconds. Uh, what is another animation? The octopus itself is an animation because it's moving the tentacles, and that one does have its own delay, which is that... 0.75, I think it was. Yeah, base tick delay. 0.75, so... The quickest thing we're updating is 3 tenths of a second, which is not, you know, super slow, but is slow enough that we don't need to push it as far as we can. Did you have a look at MAME? I think they're doing Game & Watch emulation for a few years. I haven't, uh, I haven't looked into MAME. I should do that. 
I ended up with uh, not. I ended up with basically a background one bitmap for the background. It's basically a an on disk bitmap that is the entire background, including the octopus body. Um, I'll show you my assets here. You'll get a. You can get a sense for what um, how the game is put together, kind of graphically speaking. Uh, I don't know. Did I just call it octopus background or? Now let's take a look at the uh what I actually put in the background here, Octopus Game. On this bitmap. BG with Shadow. Okay, I need to rename that eventually. Oh, a little big. Okay, so that's our background, and we're loading this in an on disk bitmap, and then for each of the segments, they all have their own tile grid that we are hiding and showing inside the octopus object. Uh, and then for our moving diver, we have one tile grid that moves to these different locations and also changes tile based on which, you know, which sprite the character is at that point in time. Uh, and then we have a couple of other tile grids up here for these things. Yeah, that's pretty much what we what we ended up with as far as like different assets for the. Uh, the interface and then I do have a copy of the background here which doesn't have the uh, little silhouettes I called them shadow in the name BG with shadow but it doesn't have those like little silhouettes behind you know behind the actual black filled in bits so the original game like because of the way the screen works you know if you look at it at an angle you would see those kind of like cutouts um, I don't know if we're going to go with the one with the shadow or without, or maybe eventually we'll make it user selectable or something, but it is super nice to use the one with the shadows while we were placing all the tile grids in the right spot because I could line them up. Nice. Great thing is uh, that I had exactly that game and watch. Nice. In the past, they could not, because there's no ROM. I think they had the decap the chips. Oh, okay. Let me catch up here. What, what was that one too, though? Let's see. JD Devin, I uh, thought it was my uh, new TV which connected. Uh, yeah, nope, I was cutting out on you. Sorry about that. Quickly connected the Ethernet cable. Yeah. Not, nope, nope, definitely on my side. Installed Discord on an iPad. Oh, nice. Discord, I need to get a, uh, I should get a chat. It would be nice to have uh, a chat on its own, on its own thing like that, an iPad separately or something like that. That way I could uh, type in the chat without it being on this computer. That would be kind of nice. It would be fun to adjust the darkness of the shadow later uh, with the joystick to emulate the funky LCD contrast controls. Oh, that's a neat, that's a neat idea for sure. Yeah, because you kind of, those games, they did kind of, they could have a contrast setting where it kind of makes it more or less visible, those silhouettes. I don't actually know what the technology behind that was, but I do remember that, that kind of like toggling the, the contrast of the game and like, Kind of like different ambient light would look better at different settings of that contrast uh, in this type of game. I never did play a game in a watch game, but I had similar types of uh, games, like games with the same type of display technology. Um, all right. So we're good on that. I think one thing we, an, an, another thing we still need is actually uh, enforcing the life loss and... I guess another thing is we need to put the diver back in the boat after he gets caught. Uh, so diver gets caught here. Diver gets uncaught. You know, it's no longer caught here, but it never showed up back in the boat, uh, which is what we want to happen, I think. So octopus game, basically back where we were. Uh, well, actually, we could do this since I'd hide caught diver. Kind of makes sense to do that, I think, probably. Pretty much any time you hide the caught diver... I think we always are going to want to go back to the first position inside the boat. Boat diver tile grid hidden false. Uh, I guess the player... Uh, we might need to change the player index. I'm not sure. Let's see what this does. I'm gonna try to get caught. Oh nope, we don't have a. We have error. Let's see. It has no game boat diver tile grid. No boat diver tile grid. Uh, 
I have a boat diver tile grid. Hmm. Does it call... Oh, okay. Calls this before, I see. Uh, so let's put that back here. I'm going to try to get caught actually down here because what I want to see next is the diver should show it back in the boat, but I suspect his index will actually still be this one, not technically the first one. So if I go over again, yeah, we're all the way back to here. So let's reset the index, which is, I think, diver player, just diver player index or location index, maybe. Diver player. Locations, current, uh, current location index. Self dot player. Yeah, uh, dot location index zero. It's supposed to be zero, or is that another one where it needs to be negative one? I think it's zero. I think zero is the first one below the boat, if I recall right. But yeah, I think technically this one below the boat is zero, and then the, the diver that's in the boat is actually a whole different tile grid, so it doesn't actually have a uh, location index. Okay, so now we're caught. Back to the boat. Oh. Hmm. That's weird. Got caught again. Hmm. What happens when you press right button, for instance. So we did put the boat diver to be showing. So this stuff will happen. We'll hide this. We'll show the player. Hmm, maybe there's some kind of refresh or something we need, like, yeah, this. We need to call this after we change the location. Honestly, we should be updating the sprite index, too. Otherwise, our diver is going to be showing the wrong sprite for the one under the boat. Both of those, and then also, which it's, uh, was it? Did it not show me because it's like, um, underscored? Mad. All right, we'll make it a uh, we'll make it private or not private. I mean, Let's see, as long as you don't uh, emulate breaking the glass. Oh wow, I think my camera just crashed. The camera for the Pi Gamer. As long as you don't emulate breaking the glass uh, that made the rainbow effect to kill the game. That's how half of the game and watch ended. I'm afraid. Sitting in the living room, I uh, have an airco unit. Today it's 40 degrees centigrade in Lisbon. My car this afternoon, the temp meter indicated 41.5. That sounds very hot. I am a Fahrenheit temperature type person. I don't know exactly how hot that is, but it sounds very hot. The, the rough estimate in my mind is I think like 20 degrees Celsius is like room temperature-ish, which is around 70-ish Fahrenheit. That's kind of the one... And then, of course, I know the freezing points as well, but I don't know any other sort of like common temps. So 41.5, I would assume, is very hot, probably over 100 Fahrenheit, something like that. It's very hot. Cars do get incredibly hot, though. Uh, this did not actually... Oh, okay, we just never did the refactor. There we go. All right, now it's not private, so we're not calling it. Now we should actually be back to... Beginning. It is weird that it jumped though, honestly. I'm not sure. 
Oh, right, right, the camera's dead. Uh... Now the camera's back, but none of the settings are right. Caught down here again. Uh, another thing we will still implement is the game speeding up as you get points. Right now, it's a static speed, and it's kind of slow. It's supposed to start slow to make it easy, and then as you get points, it speeds up to make it harder. We're just waiting. Here we go. We finally got caught. We go back. There we go. Oh, caught by the last one. Nice. Oh. Uh, hmm. How did we get stuck there? Is it simply just getting caught the second time doesn't reset, or is it that getting caught by certain tentacle doesn't reset? Two tentacle, let's do this one. That's the one we were on before, I guess. Let's do this one. Okay. Now it resets. That's working right, so let's wait till we get hit by... Nope, let's do this one. Come sooner. Huh. I get caught by. The last one. One by the treasure chest. Is it always that one? Learn a little bit more about this before we jump back to the code? Excuse me, would it, uh, would it know that when it hits the object or the end to go back and start over, or is it trying to just keep continuously making one loop without starting over? Right now, uh, it is starting over in that the diver gets reset back to the boat, when you after you get caught and after he wiggles a little bit you know just being caught there by the octopus um but it is not resetting in the like there will never be a game over right now like we won't run out of lives yet because we're not subtracting them so it is at this point the expected behavior is for it to just continue looping over and over you get caught then after a few seconds you go back to the boat and then you can just do it again and right now that is intended to go forever, but we have a bug here where it's, uh, it seems like if you get caught by the last tentacle, it's not, it's keeping you caught too long, basically. Uh, if so, would it be a hardware problem, not a software problem? I think this is going to be a, a software problem for sure. Yeah, I think the hardware is, is no problem. 105.5F, yeah, that's very hot. That is uh, too hot, I would say, even officially too hot. Um, that is weird. I wonder why it would be doing that. So, because it's weird because we set the diver caught time. Inside show caught diver. I wonder if we're getting called again. Maybe we're getting called more than once. Because if it kept calling it over and over, then it would keep resetting the diver caught time and it would never elapse because you'd never get to the now would never catch up. 
Uh, then at each vector point, uh, if it's captured at that exact vector point, uh, is there return or a loop the exact vector point? Uh, not sure if I understand that one. At each vector point, it does check each point, essentially each location uh, for the diver. The diver has one, two, three, four, five possible locations that are below the, below the boat. And each one of those locations matches up with a tentacle segment. So that first diver location matches up with that first tentacle segment that's on right now. The next diver here matches up with this tentacle segment right here, the end one. This one is tied to the one that's next to it. This one's tied to the one that's next to it. They're basically all tied to that one that is right next to them. And then if the diver is in that location, when that last tentacle turns on, that's when you get caught by it. Um, so that's when your diver moves to here, shakes his legs and arms, and then you're supposed to get reset back. But I'm thinking that probably it's continuing to call show caught diver, which is ultimately making it so we never get uncaught, basically. We never go back to loop again. Yeah, indeed. This is just getting called over and over. Which I guess is because this tip is still here. And technically the diver's index is still here. Because we did not actually change it until hide caught diver. So we probably should actually. Although I thought we were checking if the player was visible, which should also make that not count though, right? So where do we actually have that? That's an octopus tick, I believe, here. Oh, no, it, it, it's not checking the player. So actually, really what it... I see. I see. Okay, the logic is written to assume that only location index zero, that's the only one where it's checking whether the player is hidden or not, because that's the only one where the player gets hidden by the, by the player uh, moving, essentially. So if we reset this, if I go down one or two and then go back... At this point right now, my diver is still at location index zero, but the diver tile grid is hidden. And this and not right here is making it so that our diver is not able to get caught. Technically, it's actually right here. Technically, this segment right here would want to catch it. But because of this and not player hidden, it's allowing it to not get caught. So really, we need that same logic actually on all of the indexes. I just didn't realize it at the time because I was not accounting for hide caught diver and show caught diver changing the player's visibility. Maybe we should just make one one uh, one check out here. I don't know. I'll leave it like this for now. We could refactor it later. I think this should fix it though. Let's see. It doesn't seem. Natural for all the tentacles to retract suddenly after the diver's caught. Would expect that only tentacles 1 and 2 to reset with 0, A, and B, and 3 counting with their previous animation sequence. We could potentially leave them. Let's look, uh, let's look at what it does. Thank you, young man. Uh, we both learned something today. Awesome. Yeah, that's good to hear. The time, time check should be greater than equals. Time check for... Uh, which time check? Oh, uh, let's see which time check. Sorry, I'm not sure where I was when you said that. Uh, why wouldn't the index be zero in the boat? Yeah, I mean, it's just a choice that I made when I was coding it, but basically, diver zero index is right here, and the boat one, it's technically a separate object. From the, from the code's perspective, this one up here in the boat is its own object. It's not the same object as the one that moves here. Uh, and the reason that is is because it's a different size and the sprites turned out like 
all of the sprites for these ones here, they are the same size, but this one up here was a different size. Um, and it's each one was a different size from itself. So like it made sense to make that as a different sprite sheet. And then once it's a different sprite sheet, it kind of in circuit Python display IO land, it also makes sense to make it its own tile grid. Uh, and then because it's its own tile grid, it's not part of the location indexes. Essentially, we, we park on uh, location index zero, we make this player hidden, and then this one gets shown. So it's kind of a little magic trick. We trade between two different tile grids there. Um, right. Uh, I game and watch Octopus Online. I did find one of these one day online. Ah, uh, why would you do that? Because we want you to click on the ads. Well, okay. Oh. This is Flash. Maybe I said emulator. You have to have a, an app to play this? So I think this was actually, the one I found it was SVG game, I thought. I should have saved that link somewhere, aren't it? Okay, well, I don't want to spend too long just looking around for the one that we can play. Uh, if anybody does happen to find or have handy a link for playing it in the browser, and you drop that in, I definitely appreciate it. I found it a, f a week or two back. One of the other streams I did find it, um, but I'm not, I'm not having luck pulling it back up. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the uh, YouTube. There's like this six minute video which I've been using to figure out a lot of stuff about how it works. There's longer ones as well, actually. Oh, they do. Yeah, they stay. Oh, that time it re... Well, okay, but that was like a game mode change. Because even this changed, too. I think you must have pressed game A or game B or something. So there you can see some of the strategy of like having to wait while you're down here and then he had to wait again for this one. Come on buddy, get caught. Help me out here. Oh, he's really staying down there this time.
But you can kind of tell here it's like speeding up. The tentacles are starting to move faster and faster and faster. Oh, finally got caught. Okay, so this one's all the way down. Yeah, they stayed. They stayed where they're at. Good call. Yeah, thank you, Seagrover. So we should. Um, yeah, tentacles. Uh, uh, one and two need to change because those ones actually grab a hold of them, but tentacles uh, zero and four and three. Zero. Wait a minute. Do we have more tentacles than this? Zero. No, okay, yeah. Zero and... Uh, Three, index. Both are gonna just stay where they're at. Tentacles one and two will change to the specific way they need to look while they're grabbing the diver. And then when the diver, basically, we don't want to reset them anymore. So we did that inside of what hide or show caught diver one of the two. It was. Or where, where was it? Was it, uh, it where we called this from? A bunch of places. Hmm. Where did we actually put that? This was the code we wrote this way. Okay, so this one is in a knit. This is definitely a knit. Where did we have the other one of those? There we go. Hide all segments. That's where I did it. Okay, well actually, so hide all segments, we do want to do it inside of there. The thing is, we probably just don't want to call this from where we are. Uh, but, we need, we do need to set the, um, we need to set the index for tentacles one and two. So this is basically hiding all of tentacle one, well, except for zero, and one, actually. So it's hiding two, three, and four. It's hiding the last three here. And then it's showing the one tip here. So I guess what we should do is leave the index on uh, zero one for that one. So no, what was it? Indexes. Uh, Technical current indexes. One equals. One. Direction, we'll just leave it in whatever direction it's in. Uh, so the boat is basically the health bar. Uh, yes, the boat, well, the boat does double duty a little bit. The two uh, divers on the right side of the boat, that is essentially your health bar. Those are the number of lives you have remaining. The diver on the left of the boat is not really part of your health bar. That one is more or less just graphics, honestly. Um, that one represents sort of the negative one index. That's the location where you're safe from all the tentacles. 
Um, and of course, like I was talking about before, in R code, it's actually a different object. So it's not, there's not a literal negative one index, but like, you know, from the viewer's perspective, it's going to feel like there is. Uh, from the player's perspective, I should say. Um, and then the other thing that that first one on the very left there does is it does the animations for pulling the bag up. So when we return here, of course, my mouse was right over it, but you can see him there lifting the bag over and over as he uh, basically retrieves the treasure from the water, essentially. And that's those are the those are the primary purposes of the left one. Uh, but the right two, those two are the life uh, life meters, essentially. Pika Pika Octopus uh, says you need fla uh, Flash Player. Yeah, I think I found that one too, but I don't have Flash Player either. There definitely was one somewhere. I, uh, I'll have to pull back up the link. I, I think it was implemented as an SVG game. So I was, for a minute, I was trying to search like SVG game, but I didn't come up with it. And the, yeah, so this one, it was like, it was an actual SVG, you know, XML, right? Just live on the page, and it was changing the the values inside the XML. It was actually really cool, to be honest with you. Oh, is this it? This is it. Is this it? Did I download this? Yeah, I downloaded this. That would make sense why I was not able to find it. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, but it's on, uh, I think. There we go. Now I have control over it. Oh, I can't, I cannot actually go up. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay. We'll need to, we'll need to enforce that. You can only go back to the boat if you have treasure. See, I try to go back. I'm pushing left right now. It's not letting me. This is also way faster. Oh, I can't move anymore. Oh, I got stuck. I think probably I focused it wrong or something. It's like a browser issue, not a... Uh... Oh, no, I don't know. It's not working very good. Oh. Huh. Oh. My fingers got on the wrong buttons. Oh, actually, that keeps these out. Huh. It does hide these. Keeps these out. Tentacle uh, 2. Do they, did, it, did it extend them specifically, or did it just uh, keep them where they were? Keeps them where they are. It doesn't extend them. If they're out, it keeps them out, though. Okay. Zero, one, two, three. I think this is actually the only one it was hiding, which would have, I think we would have, could have got a gap before. This reminds me of all the electronics my parents couldn't afford when I was younger. Uh, well, I mean, the good news is nowadays you can uh, rebuild and relive these things on a single device, right? Like, that's the cool thing about this is once we're done, we'll be able, you could play this not only on a Pi Gamer, which is about, you know, a Pi Gamer is not a cheap device necessarily, right? It's about 45 or $50, I want to say, which is, you know, not the... In the most expensive video game ever, certainly, but it's kind of expensive for some people, right? Uh, but there is also Pi Badges. Uh, yeah, Pi Badge, and then there's a Pi Badge LC, and you could play the same game on that, and that one, those are like 20 or $25. And the cool thing is, you could write other game and watch games. Like, we might go on and make a series out of this. I'll pick another one after Octopus. We might make more of these things and then you can play multiple games on one platform. That makes it kind of cool because you don't have to buy each game individually, uh, which is certainly how Nintendo would have wanted you to do it. Did want the calculator watch. Nice, yeah. Okay, yeah. Calculator watch. Or You know what this reminds me of also is like calculator games. If you, if you ever had a TI-83 TI or TI-84 or whatever and you could write games on the calculator, 
It's definitely had lots of those going around in my high school. Tentacle 2... It is weird, why are we- I wonder why are we saying Tentacle 2 Segment 0? We wouldn't really want that hidden though, right? We would want that showing. Because that one's like touching the diver. Hmm. I don't think it, it did not actually hide though, I don't think. Weird. TI 89 assembly. Nice. So then, uh,. I guess Tentacle 2, we just leave the index alone, right? Tentacle 1, we change it because we actually hid, potentially we hid a couple of these segments down here. Uh, between 0 and 3 segments. We hid these last three. Of course, if they were already hidden, then it doesn't matter, but... We reset back to 1, and that makes sense. Tentacle 2 should just stay where it's at. I am still suspicious of these. I don't quite get why these are here, and they don't seem to be doing that. So I'm also confused about what they do, if anything. Zero and one are up here by the caught diver. And they're still showing. Oh, maybe those exist in the caught diver image. Maybe we're cheating, because the Cot Diver is one of the things that's its own sprite. Is it called Cot Diver? Why not? It's uh, Diver Cot Small, okay. I see. Basically those... Basically those segments are inside this. So then I think we don't want to hide them, though. I think we just leave them showing. Let's make sure it doesn't cover anything up. Because that, that would be the one reason that we might want to hide it. Is uh, if it's like going to cover up the, the animated one. But as long as the animated one still looks good, I think we just leave those there. And that way... We don't have to worry about adjusting the index. Because uh, if we do hide those, then we might, I think we might need to adjust the index to account for it. Yeah, right, that looks good to me still. Yeah, and then it just, now it just picked up where it left off. So we didn't really reset. The first one did, well, the, uh, the, the one index, which is the second tentacle, the, the index one tentacle, did reset. But index two stayed the same, and all the rest of them stayed the same. This one even now has the tip extended, so that stayed. We reset. Oh, we did get a gap in there. How did we get a gap in there? Not touching anything on Tentacle 2 anymore. Out of stock ish? Yeah, Pi Badge 25 ish. Yeah, stock is a, is a problem, probably, though. I haven't looked lately. They could very well be out of stock. Uh, pro tip, if you're in the U.S., if you have a micro center near you, the micro center stocks Adafruit stuff, at least the one near me does. So sometimes you can find stuff like that there. I'm pretty sure my local one has pie badges on the shelf, uh, but there aren't, like, I don't, there's only a handful of cities that have micro center. It's not everywhere. I, yeah, I don't know. Why did we, um, I feel like that Tentacle 2 is still... Got some weirdness with it. I think we want to get caught while Tentacle 2 is like all the way out.
Okay, during hide caught diver. I see. Yeah, we don't want those. The only the only tentacle segment we change in hide caught diver is tentacle one B, the tip. The tip that is basically holding the diver's head right there. That's the only tentacle that changes when we hide the caught diver. We shouldn't be changing anything else at this point. Yeah. Uh, yes, we are on Twitch as well. Yeah, we don't have the Twitch chat. I don't, uh, I'm not quite, my attention span can't quite handle more than two chats. Even two chats is a little much for me sometimes, but yeah, so I don't have the chat like on the screen or anything, and I'm not watching the, the Twitch chat, but we are streaming over there. So uh, I, I will take this opportunity to mention too, if anybody is watching on Twitch and you want to get involved or ask a question or uh, send a comment or anything like uh, Discord or the YouTube chat, those are the two places to do it. I won't see the Twitch chat during the stream. Out of stock on DigiKey. Ah, that's all. That's another good backup tip as well too. Though is check DigiKey. In this case, if they're out of stock too, it doesn't uh, doesn't get you there. But that's definitely a good good tip. Good place to check. I assume at some point we'll get a newer version. The the one thing is the Pi Badge and the Pi Gamers, all these devices are based on the same D51, um, which I think essentially the same D chips are a little harder to get right now than, you know, like an RP2040, for instance, or like an ESP32, you know, S2 or S3 or something, some of those newer ones. Uh, I think some of those are a little easier to get in today's... Oh, hey, this time... Uh, We had a gap. We need to show tentacle one segment one. Segment zero? No, segment one. Is it one A one or is it just one? Clinical one, segment one. Pink uh, 2040 feather? Yeah, I like the pink feather as well. Um, I don't know if I finished my train of thought, but I think the same D51s, really all the same D chips, I think are a little harder to get these days, but uh, RP2040s, ESP32S2s, and S3s, and some of the other newer chips, I think those are a bit easier, so maybe hopefully, you know, one of these days we might get a new Pi Gamer or a new Pi Badge uh, based on the RP2040 or ESP32S2. I would not be too shocked if that came along one of these days. Of course, I don't, even though I do work for uh, Adafruit on CircuitPython, I don't have any inside knowledge, so this is definitely not, like, guaranteed. You know, you did not, you know, did not hear it from me. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I would not be surprised as a, uh, as a customer of Adafruit seeing the things they have released in the past. I would not be surprised if at some point we got a newer Pi Gamer or a newer Pi Badge Circuit Playground as well, I think, is probably coming one of these days as well. Okay, I think we're good now. It's no longer having any gaps in it. Looks like all the tentacles are getting set to the right spots afterwards. Ah, oh, like this one here is still just all extended. Those middle ones stay like that. They pick up where they left off. Everything's all good. 
Yeah, I think we're looking good there. One thing I noticed in the browser one is I'm not allowed to do this. I'm not allowed to go back up unless I have treasure. Um, which also, I guess it would be considered a bug, the fact that I went up and it's showing the treasure one. Even if, like, if I was allowed to go up there, it should be showing the one that doesn't have the treasure bag because I did not have any treasure. So that would be a bug if that's how it was supposed to behave at all. But the real answer is we're not even supposed to be able to go there. Don't even go there. We just can't go back once we get down. Only if you have treasure, then you can go back up. Oh, caught. Okay. I don't know if there's a way to turn the sound off. So, in our left button press uh, here, which is kind of like the highest level place, this is when CodePy tells our game object that the left button was pressed. We will... Put another condition on this. Uh, treasure count greater than zero. Yeah, there we go. Now we're stuck. Go get some treasure. Now we can... Oh, of course I ran into the tentacle. might start at a slightly faster rate. I think I overshot how slow it would go, knowing that eventually it's going to speed up based on your score. But we might have ended up a little too slow. I will say too, I feel like it's easier to rack up points in my version, like maybe we're giving them too many points when they're here. Because I think the logic right now is... Oh. What? Index out of range? One forty-seven. Calls player move forward. Five oh seven calls update four ninety index out of range. That be this index curse sprite index or would that mean that this entire number what we came up with all with all of this was more than how many were in this thing Might be a tricky bug to reproduce. This is the first time I've seen it, too.
Same player play again. Hi gamer. Oh, let me see here. But I promised. I did not promise. I have no power for that. They're like, okay, yeah, now we're caught up. I will say fingers crossed. I hope it does. <laughs> you uh, i'm hoping for it as well especially i think esp would be really cool or i mean now that we have an rp2040 with wi-fi really the thing i think would be cool is a pi gamer with wi-fi which there was uh david mentioned or i don't know if you're talking maybe you're not talking about the older one but there was a pi gamer at one point with a uh a spy esp32 connected also kind of like the pi portal i don't think it ever actually got released though but it existed for a minute and it had a build. It may still be listed on circuitpython.org, but I don't know. I think, I'm not sure any hardware ever made it outside of Adafruit on that one. But like an ESP32 S2 on a Pi Gamer, that would be super slick, I think. Pi Gamer has eight megs of flash while the Pi Edge has two megs. Same amount of RAM, so both should work, yeah. And I think the sprites and stuff for the game are relatively small, so it shouldn't uh, shouldn't be a problem at two megs. Of course, you can't have as many other programs on it, but after starting to run out of RAM continually with RAM Hungry Feathers since TFT uh, graphics project, I'm starting to really appreciate more the amount of RAM and SRAM. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that is one of the things, too. Like, all of my traditional programming is super high-level stuff, like... Circuit Python is this is the only programming I've ever done where I have to be like cautious about RAM really. Obviously, it's best to not waste RAM if you can avoid it, but at the same time like oh, there's a gap there. It's best to not waste RAM if you can avoid it, but at the same time like in the PC environment, RAM is basically infinite, right? Like you never really use too much RAM, whereas in CircuitPython, you definitely run out pretty quick, especially if you're doing graphics stuff. It takes a lot of RAM to hold bitmaps and things. So I think when it, when it says uh, show caught diver, it should be turning on segment zero of pentacle one, and it seems like it is not. So we'll try to recreate this bug again later as well, but let's make it do that. Oh. Actually, it should be showing 0 and 1. I think I just never... It's a random chance, like, you'd have to get caught while zero is not showing in order to notice that bug. So I think that was the first time I actually got caught in that state. I'll wait until tentacle one is retracted, and then I'll try to get caught by a different one. I will say too, not resetting the tentacles does make the game a little bit harder because you won't be able to just like do the exact same pattern. Okay, here we go. Nice. Okay, yeah, perfect. I think we're good to go there. I wonder what it was about taking the treasure earlier. Somehow we triggered that index out of bounds error. Possibly. Good point. Sell the feather pads. Oh, uh, you can plug an airlift into the Pi Gamer. That's true, you can. Yeah, an airlift feather wing, you should be able to plug into the Pi Gamer. But, like... In ESP32 S2 with it all in one, it's just the network seems to be a little bit smoother because it doesn't have to communicate over SPY. Like a Feather ESP32 S2 compared to like a Pi Portal or something, I feel like the Feather. Oh, it won't let me back up. means my current treasure is zero but why would my current treasure be zero because also i have the bag showing so if my current treasure was actually zero i shouldn't have the bag visible wonder what my current treasure is 
It's times like this I wish there was a console where I could like look at the variable right now. I'd love to know what the value inside the variable of Oh, I got caught. Um I'd love to know what the value in like taken treasure or whatever. I I don't know the name of the variable off the top of my head, truthfully. Actually, I'm back to already having the bag right now. Oh, you know what? I think when you get caught, it's not emptying your treasure. And it should be. I, I think, honestly, we should do this inside of here, since all f five of these call show caught diver. Seems kind of lame to put some logic here and then duplicate it five times instead of putting it in here and just having it once, right? Treasure count. So we need to reset that to zero, first of all. And then actually, oh, I think my camera just crashed again. Treasure. All right, camera. Yeah, when I come back down, I shouldn't have the bag, but I do. Oh. No, I don't. So let's fix that. That's going to be right button press. Okay, so this is what's adding to the score when you take treasure. So here is actually the branch I'm after. If the boat diver is not hidden, which means it is showing. Actually, I think we want to do this in the left button press, right? Left button press, if the index is zero, if the treasure count is greater than zero, hide the player. Show the boat diver. We actually already have this if statement, so I guess I just had this too far down, honestly, because now this is up here. We don't need this again. Call deposit treasure. So actually, I guess inside of here. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, state. Okay, this is the state of the game, though. So it should also go self dot player dot curse state equal player dot state no equal uh, diver player dot state no treasure because we're depositing it. So after we once we start depositing it, we essentially have no more. And it'll basically just run 
on its own to run us down to zero. Okay, let me uh, catch up here on the chat. Oh yeah, yeah. The feather wing connector is on the Pi Gamer and the Pi Badge, but the LC left it off. But you could solder one if you bought one. Yeah, it is surface mount, so it's kind of small, but it is on the larger side of surface mount things, though. So it's like if you don't have much experience with surface mount. It's actually a good thing to start with. I mean, it might be better to practice with something less expensive, but it is a bigger as far as surface mount things go. So. A great idea. Glad they put those pads there. Optional airlift must have been in, in mind when they designed it. Yeah, I think so. Airlift package bundler. Be a way to do it automatically and download games over Wi-Fi. Future is looking cool. Definitely agree. Yeah, web workflow I think is going to bring a lot of stuff like setting up games and stuff automatically to your device. I think that can uh, be a thing that web workflow makes a little bit easier for some stuff too. Use it for load cell, thermal camera, motor controller, RTC, thermal camera, wings, uh, not all at the same time though. Really cool, I had no idea it was in the Feather ecosystem. Definitely we'll put one of those on the wish list. Yeah, Pi Badges and the Pi Gamers. Yeah, they're, they're kind of like the weirdest ones of the Feather ecosystem because they just have the stamp on the back, but it, it does have the stamp on the back and you can put wings onto them, so it's pretty sweet. An adapter to connect the badge to a feather cricket for a robot. Nice. Arduino in the Adafruit IO. You could put your high scores. That's true. We could send our high scores over to Adafruit IO. We could make like a scoreboard to go on your uh, TV or something. Gotta leave early. Thanks for the stream. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Ask Patrick. Have a good night. A uh, good weekend and everything. I'll be signing off here in just a few minutes anyway, so uh, not gonna miss too much. Um. I will check here, so let's make sure that we properly get rid of our bag now. Now we have the bag all the way back. We still have it. Oh, but now, now we don't. I think it's probably because we didn't call update. I think what happened is we set the current state to no treasure, but that uh, update location, this thing, this is what actually checks the state and then decides which sprite to show. So we did not actually, we changed states, but it didn't matter until we called this again. And so actually the part that's weird is the fact that this doesn't get called when you go from boat diver to location index zero on the player diver. How's it going, Johnny? Um... So do we just call update? Or if that's what we need to do, or do we set our sprite index manually? I guess calling update seems like the better thing to do. I don't know if that's going to bother it, like, this might make the player show in a place or with a sprite that we don't want it to, I'm not sure, I have to see. Oh, I got caught, like, right when I went down. I don't think the bag was there, though, so I do think it worked.
Starting near the end of it. Finally been able to catch a stream for the first time far too long. Hope everyone's doing well and having a lovely Friday. How's it going? Is that Keith, I think? Yeah, Keith, the EE. Thanks for uh, hanging out for a bit with us here. Hope you have a nice, hope you had a nice day, nice Friday, and a nice weekend and all that such. Plus one out. There it is. Okay, and so as soon as I go down, I should not have the bag, which I don't anymore, so we're good now. Okay. Oh no. Oh, I thought it was going to get me. Yeah, I think we collect them too fast here. I'm just spamming the button, and it's basically giving me one treasure per button spam. Of course, I didn't start running back fast enough, so we ended up losing it, but... This one, I feel like... A little slower. It's not one per... It's not one per button press. I will say, too, it also starts a little bit faster. Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. I think it's like every three presses you get one score. Maybe two presses. I was trying to do it and I was going slow, but I got caught. Okay, so game A is taking lives. Okay, so we're at the end of the game here. This is game over. We'll need to make the logic for that. What does game B do? Feels a little faster, but I'm not sure if it actually is. Oh no. I will say, I don't actually spot the difference. I was thinking the difference between A and B was that one of them didn't take your lives away, but that does not appear to be the case. We lost lives on both of them. So I'll have to do some research and figure out what is the uh, specific difference between game A and game B. Nope. We'll slow this down as well. Maybe every two presses. I'm gonna try to get in there one more time. Yeah, I think it's two presses get you one score. Which what I'm doing right now is every, oh, this automatically bumps you down. Did it do that in game A? Of course, maybe the first life is different. Oh, no, it does. It did automatically. Okay. Oh, dear. Okay. So, automatically pushing them off the boat. Collecting treasure slower. Game over sequence of just continue to flail. I'm going to start noting these down. We'll probably hook up the A and B buttons on the Pi Gamer to be game A and game B as well. Uh, on the real one, there's buttons for game A and game B. We'll probably use A and B, these two buttons, for those. Uh, what was the third one I said? 
Oh, automatically pushing him off the boat. That way they have to go. Basically that limits the game. Cause like in my version, the way it's written right now, you can uh you can just wait here forever, right? Like it will never force you to actually play. Um, but the real one it looks like does. So that's a good list of concrete things. I'll need to research game A and game B to figure out the exact differences there to implement those. Um but we're getting pretty darn close here. We got a lot of the rest of the functionality implemented especially around the diver getting caught. Uh, I thought we were a little closer than we were, but we definitely are pretty much there now. Um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about this. I will... Let's see, today is Friday. I'll be back tomorrow for uh, my stream on Saturday morning. That's Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Um, and so if you're interested in following the development of this game, then... Um, that's the next time you can see me work on it. it will be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Central. I'll be on my own YouTube and my own Twitch instead of Adafruit. Here we're on the Adafruit channel for YouTube and Twitch. Uh, if you want to get a notification, you can follow me on Twitch. I am FoamyGuy underscore Twitch over there. Um, so you can follow me and then you'll get a notification when I start streaming on Saturdays. Um, I will pick up where I left off here tomorrow morning. So I'll be working on that game A, game B stuff. I'll knock out those three items and I'll try to look into the difference a little bit more and we'll try to get those two modes fleshed out. Um, and then after that, it's time to get into the guide. Uh, I guess there's maybe a little work to do on the, the points up here as well. These are just the standard font. We'll get a nice seven segment looking font for them, but that'll be pretty quick and easy, I think. So um, that's kind of the, the remaining things to do on this project. Um, and that's what we'll be working on tomorrow. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching. Let me see what this one is. One reason Pi Game uh, as a SAMD is uh, compatible. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, SAMD51 has got the make code stuff, and I think you're right. Yeah, I don't believe there is compatibility yet on RP2040, or even maybe ESP32S2, I don't think either, which is a good point. Yeah, make code uh, was one of the primary like other ways to program this device. Yeah, definitely a good point. Uh, thanks for the stream. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for watching. Uh, C. Grover and everybody else. Uh, David, Paul, I know a couple of folks left. Keith, Johnny, thanks for tuning in. Ask Patrick left a little bit ago. DJ Devin, C. Grover, thank all of you for interacting in the chat here. C. Grover, I think, uh, thanks for the suggestions and stuff. You got me on the right track for a few of those things. Uh, Deshipu was around for a bit. Thanks to Deshipu if you're still hanging out. Um, I think we got just about everybody on the Discord side, right? Uh, add in. Um, I didn't. I didn't see that when it came through. So sorry, I didn't mention it before. But thanks for tuning in. If you're still here, definitely uh, appreciate having you. Uh, Charles, thanks for tuning in as usual and chatting in the in the YouTube with us here. Uh, Paul, DJ Devin. Yeah, I think we got everybody. Toddbot, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, over on the YouTube side, we got some of the usual suspects. Beata, thanks for tuning in as usual. Jason Perry, uh, thank you. I don't, I don't recall seeing your name before, so you might be a new viewer. Uh, maybe not, though, too. I don't have the best memory, but um, uh, either way, though, thanks for tuning in. Clipper Ship, uh, Gordy G, and Axel Magnus Manson. Uh, yep, thank you to all you folks. Um, yeah, again, uh, I'll be back tomorrow morning. Thanks, everybody. Hope everybody